In the previous video, we learned about how to find electric field at the point P due to long line of charge. So up here, lambda is charge per unit length. So because of the long line of charge at point P, uh, this is what we found electric field e equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught x where lambda is charge per unit length so in the previous video as i mentioned we found the electric field because of the long line of charge so assume that this is a conductor okay here is a conductor and this is fully charged okay now i'm trying to find electric field at point p okay point p is very close to it so compared to this length the distance between this conductor is very small okay so anywhere anywhere on this line at any point that magnetic field is going to be constant that e equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught times x um, so lambda is charge per unit length how much charge is there uh, divided by length of the conductor um, by 2 pi epsilon naught times x is the distance okay this distance assuming this length is very large compared to the um, compared to the x this x in this video i'm going to find electric field at point p due to ring of charge so ring of charge is nothing but what i'm doing um, i'm doing that long i'm, I'm converting that long con conductor into a ring okay a loop of wire so what I'm doing here, I'm taking that long conductor, I'm trying to loop, making it as a loop. Here is the loop, loop of a conductor. Now I'm trying to find magnetic field P, I mean magnetic field E at point P. The point is right here. So if you look at this loop, I'm not finding exactly at the center of the loop. I'm finding little further away from the center of the loop. Okay, so here is the loop. I'm finding electric field at this point. Now, at the same time, I'm assuming this distance is x. Okay, and this is the uh, radius of this loop is a. So here, lambda is charge per unit length, similar to the previous uh, case. So unit length is nothing but here 2 pi a, since a is the um, radius of the loop. Q is the total charge on the ring. Now I'm going to take very small length on that ring that's I'm going to call that as DL okay because of this DL the magnetic field at point P I'm going to label that as DE DE equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught which is K over DQ over R square DQ is the charge only in this small area okay so DQ is I can write it as DL or, or lambda times DL because Q is the total charge. Now here also same thing the Y component so because of this length magnetic field is going to be towards down because of here right there so at each point all the Y components are going to cancel out each other okay so at the end we will end up having only the X component so here uh, here electric field at that point um, will have only ex ex is in the integral of dex de times cos theta so we we have d equal to 4 pi uh, epsilon naught lambda dl over r square right there um, i'm integrating that because of cos theta is nothing but uh, only x component okay and you can say from the diagram cos theta is nothing but x over r here theta is right there so cos theta equal to x over radius okay radius is nothing but a square plus x square a square root of that's from the Pythagoras theorem so we found that e equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, times x over x square plus a square to the power of 3 by 2 times q. q is the total charge on that ring so this is the electric field at point v because of ring of charge now the next point is electric field at point p due to disk of charge now what are we doing here so, so for example in the previous case we have the ring of charge right 
um, now those rings I'm taking the rings and then with a different diameter with different diameter I'm making that as a disc so here is the disc this disc is made up of with uh, many rings there are so many rings on this disc um, very small small rings and uh, make this as a disc so here I'm going to introduce a new term um, Sigma Sigma is nothing but charge per unit length so here I'm using Sigma but at the same time your textbook is using eta okay so eta is charge per unit area okay and sorry if I said unit length charge per unit area dq over 2 pi r times dr so I'm trying to find electric field at the point um, P which is a z, z distance so you need to assume in uh, three dimension okay so if you look at here this disk I'm placing in this is the um, z axis y axis and this is the x okay so I'm trying to find electric field at point P very close to the disk anywhere right here right here right here right here very close to the disk when it comes to the far away far away in the sense I'm talking about say if this radius of the disk is it's look like around three inches if I go beyond an inch that's far away but I'm talking about my X is very small okay then what is the electric field um, around around this disk that's what we're trying to find so here I found DE DE is nothing but the electric field because of a small ring okay what we are doing I'm integrating those small small rings together and to find the final electric field okay so to find the final electric field I'm not going to talk about this please review this uh, mathematical equation okay the final electric field is this is the total electric field at point P because of the disk of uh, charge okay now as I mentioned if I take the important point here I want you to know if I take that Z distance Z is very small compared to the radius of uh, radius of the disk then e equal to Sigma over 2 epsilon naught so electric field at any point electric field at any point because of a single disk is Sigma over 2 epsilon naught as long as the length is um, as long as the length is uh, very small so here as I said if I want to find electric field at the point P I'm talking about the point P is very close to the disk need not to be center anywhere either here 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 um, I mean it might vary when it comes to the at the edge of the disk because some of the electric field is escaping from the edges but electric field anywhere very close to the disk is we'll see um, sigma over 2 epsilon naught or eta over 2 epsilon naught some books are using eta some books are using sigma now we're going to find out electric field uh, between two disks or two plates so here is one plate another plate now if I put them together very close as mentioned the distance between the plates is very small compared to the radius of the radius of the disk now whenever we charge this plate positive charge automatically when I bring it very close to it this plate is going to be automatically negatively charged we call this device is capacitor capacitor is nothing but two conducting plates separated by a dielectric material so here is a conducting plate another conducting plate we're separating them uh, by a dielectric material here air is the dielectric material so when we separate them by using dielectric material this act like a energy storage device this stores energy in the form of um, electric field so we just found that the electric field produced by this is sigma over to epsilon naught and if if this plate is positively charged that electric field is going away going away from the from the positive plate and we know that electric field always starts at the positive plates and at negative plate so if i make this as a negative plate so electric field is coming towards towards this right so this has a negative q charge this one has positive q charge so this is going to produce 
epsilon uh, sorry sigma over 2 epsilon naught this is going to i mean get sigma over 2 epsilon naught so it's going to be both of them add them together you will end up with sigma over epsilon naught so the electric field between these two plates is sigma over epsilon naught anywhere between the plates at the edges there might be some leakage uh, electric field going a little bit outside but we can ignore that part uh, it's very minimum so anywhere in between the plates the electric field is going to be constant that value is sigma over epsilon naught so you can look at here we have a positive plate a positive charge here and negative charge there so the electric field anywhere in between these two plates is sigma over epsilon naught or eta over epsilon naught i mean some books are using eta now when it comes to the outside outside of these two plates the electric field is going to be zero because let me find out what is the electric field here at this point okay i'm assuming this distance is also very small let me take this distance as x okay that distance is x this distance is also x and um, yeah so at this point electric field at this point because of the positive charge electric field is going away okay that let me label that as e1 e1 equal to at that point e1 equal to um, can i say sigma over 2 epsilon naught now at the same point because of the negative plate electric field is coming in this direction what is that value that is also sigma over 2 epsilon naught uh, because even though the, the distance is doubled i'm thinking this 2x is very small compared to the length of or uh, radius of this uh, disc okay so both of them are in opposite direction so they both cancel out each other so there won't be any electric field outside of those Two plates okay so electric field outside of those two plates is zero i will stop this video here in the next video i'm going to talk about a couple of examples thank you